one more sleep, four more meals, one more shower, two more showers, and how many trips to the toilet and cups of tea? I don't know, but West Ham are back tomorrow. And despite despite the best efforts of Sky in the Premier League to make it as dull and unattractive as they possibly could, judging by what I saw Aston Villa and Sheffield United, I'm looking forward to it. So today, Declan Rice at centre-back, quite possibly. David Moyes guaranteed a job for life-ish. We'll talk about that in a second. And um, I think that's about it. But before we get started, Robert Green... Our old goalkeeper has caused quite a stir with his new appearance. It's still the same guy. But if you take a look at the picture when he appeared on the telly. Now he's taken a lot of stick for the haircut and the Joe Exotic moustache. Personally, I think the haircut's pretty cool. But the moustache is an abomination. Now, in other news, I say news, there's an article. There's an article up on Claret and You which suggests that David Moyes is going to retain his job, whether he keeps us up or avoids relegation. But before we get into that, there's a suggestion that we know, you know, Angelo Bonner is injured. He's not featured in any of the build-up games. You know all this. There's a rumour that he's not going to play Balbuena. He's going to drop Declan Rice back to centre-half to partner Diop. Now, I, I think, I don't want to, I want to credit him if he said it, which is, I think the prediction come from Express Dam employee, but if it didn't, if you know what I mean, I don't I don't want to label him with some false information. But that's what I heard. Apparently, he he'd, he'd, um, he'd tweeted that out, that, that that's going to happen. Diop and Declan Rice at centre-half. Wow, that's a massive call. Now, don't get me wrong. I think that Declan Rice is going to play out the majority of his career, or a large part of his career, as a centre-half. I think he's a really good centre-half. I think he may well turn out to be a better centre-half than a midfielder. But... At the moment, in the situation that we're in, I do think that's a hell of a... Well, it shows a lot of confidence in Declan Rice, but it doesn't show an awful lot of confidence in Fabian Balbuena. Um, that's going to be really interesting. It hadn't even entered my mind that that could happen. So I'm going to be watching the starting lineup. Well, we'll be watching it anyway, but with, with an awful lot of interest. So just to see if David Moyes does make that decision. Guess if he does... We see Noble in the middle, Suchek and, and possibly Fornals. I don't, this is, it's throwing a spanner in the works. But you know what? If we don't know and it's keeping us confused, then Wolves are confused. And that's got to be a good thing, right? Anyway, on to the story at hand. Let me just read it out to you because this has, this has surprised me somewhat. It says, Moy's future has been decided. David Moyes will remain the Hammers boss, whatever Premier League fate this season. The Hammers kick off basically. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, there have been suggestions that should the manager fail to keep West Ham afloat in the top league, he'll be leaving the club for the second time despite saving them the first time around. However, Claret and you has learned that the club are determined to stick by the Scott regardless of the outcome of this horrifying season. There's a nervousness around the club as we prepare to resume and that we might crash into the championship. They've called it an apocalyptic scenario. It is right. I've, I mentioned this before. Every time I've had contact with a club, there have been discussions. That keeps getting mentioned, relegation. They're really worried about it. And, and, and probably so they should be, of course. It said, basically it says, uh, but there's great faith in the manager. Um, and he has the right squad to survive. A senior source told us on the phone, David will definitely be here next season, regardless of the outcome of this one. It's been an impossible season by anybody's standards. Right. OK, um, I think that might be. I like it as a vote of confidence, as, as a, a show of faith in the manager, as a, a public declaration. I like it. I like to think if they've leaked that information uh, to Clara and Hugh, I'd like to think that they've certainly 
been able to to speak those words to David Moyes and say as much to him. So that bit I agree with. I also agree that it's been an absolutely horrendous season to try and manage anything at all. It, unprecedented, let's call it. But, sorry, I'd probably also say that I think that the two occasions that David Moyes has taken over the club have both been in in really bad circumstances. He's basically got the job because other people have failed. So he's, he's never inherited us in a position of strength. I've been really impressed with him. I like what he's doing. I hope he succeeds. I I have a hunch he keeps us up. If he does, he deserves to keep the job. Absolutely. To to keep us safe twice, to to grab us from relegation when we were falling through the trap door, bring us back into Premier League twice, he deserves a run at the job. I don't think there's any doubt about that at all, regardless of what any personal misgivings we might have about selection, substitutions, things, things like that. I think the greater picture is that he would deserve the job. But to say that he definitely gets the job in the event of relegation, well, that's 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 a tough one because we wouldn't know. We we, we don't know we don't know the, the detail. We don't know the small the small stories that would go towards that. We don't know. Basically, we might go down and he might be tactically to blame. Might get a substitution. We might get everything wrong. If that's the case, it would be it would be silly of us now. To promise him a new contract and promise that he would remain here if it looks like he can't do the job. And as I understand it, he didn't do a, a particularly good job uh, with Sunderland under similar circumstances. So I just think we might be jumping the gun a little bit here on this one. I don't know. I mean, look, let me let me, let me me know what you think. I just thought it was a... I was, I was going to say I think the timing is strange. Maybe the timing is not strange. Maybe the timing is is just right before our first game. Vote of confidence. Um, instill some security in him. And you know what? He deserves that. Whether we think he should retain the job if he does a bad job, that's that's by the by. He's managed us for his difficult period and, and he deserves the support of the club. 100%. I mean, he's certainly got my support. I think he's handled himself really, really well throughout all this difficult situation. And as I mentioned on the preview last night, I think there's um, I think there's been enough whispers. I think the interview with Terry Wesley, I think there's been enough to suggest that actually David Moyes would be very, very well prepared. Also, everything he was saying when everyone was on lockdown, how he was putting things in place, how he was regularly speaking to the players. We've heard Mark Noble recently say he was spending six hours a day on the phone to all the players. I, I just think that there's a, a huge possibility, a probability, let's say, that we've done this whole thing really, really well. Um, I say we've done our preview. If you watched the preview last night, which was lovely to do, by the way, it's such a long time since we did the last one, I predicted a one-all draw, which is a little bit, a little bit sitting on the fence, really. But, basically, I've decided to do a little bet. And I'm going to only move over to the side because I'll, I'll I'll put a bet up there on the screen. Um, now, look, I ain't got a lot of money to bet, but I need fast returns. So this one, and it's bound to come in, makes me two million quid. Have a look at this. I mean, come on. That's great, right? Now, I know there's a lot of you watching this thinking, I've got to get on that. You don't have to, but I do understand the superstition that now you've seen it, you might want to. Um, I bet 10 pence, OK, just to put it into context. All right. It's not even mine. I stole it out of my son's money box. It's everyone's a winner. Apart from my son. He's probably down a little refresher sweet. But anyway, what he doesn't know won't hurt him. Right, we've got the Norwich and Southampton game. I've got that as one all. I think that's fair enough. I think my money is safe on that one. Uh, Watford v Leicester, I've got as 2-1. A little bit tougher to call. Obviously, I've backed myself with a West Ham and Wolves. That's what I said in the preview. And I will stick by that. I, I can feel, I can actually feel the money. I'm spending the money in my brain. Yacht, Ferrari, new shed. Newcastle, I I reckon Steve Bruce got a point to prove. It's the longest takeover in history, isn't it? Um, 
I got a lot of stick from Newcastle fans when I said, uh, however long ago it was, 10 years ago when this when this um, takeover started, that I, I wasn't sure it was going to happen because these things normally happen very quickly. Well, it, it may or it may not happen. I don't know. But Steve Bruce has obviously got points proof because I think if they do get taken over, poor old Steve Bruce, who's done better than anyone expected. The Geordies didn't want him. They wanted because they lost Rafa, got Brucey, and he's done better than anyone expected. I wouldn't be surprised. I thought fitness was a bit of an issue, by the way. I watched the games the other day. Um, Sheffield United have only just played, basically, haven't they? So, um, I don't know. I, I reckon Newcastle win 2 0. Good odds on that one, though. Man United, I, I just think they're going to beat Tottenham. I really do. Um, Arsenal, Brighton, they can't be as bad as they were the other day. And I've got Bournemouth uh, v Crystal Palace at 1 0, which is the sort of scoreline you see when Crystal Palace play, isn't it, really? I don't know. I might be wrong. I might have it totally wrong. But I think not. I think not. I think whenever that last game is played, 7.45. OK, I reckon come... So what's that? Eight I reckon come about half past nine on Saturday night, I'm going to be a very, very rich man. Party time. Party time. You've got to get... Actually, don't get on it. Don't. Um, one other thing. I don't know if you notice, my glasses keep slipping off. It's too, it, look, lots of things. There's no opticians, right? No opticians, no dentists has been a right, a right pain. Now, I know that there's Dom who watches this and he is an optician, but some of other of you might know, the little bit has fallen off my glasses, that bit. Does anyone know what those bits are called? The little rubber bits? Can I buy them? I need to know what they call it. I don't even know what to search them on the internet is. Can I buy them? Can I put them on myself? Because it's digging in to me big old hooter and it's making me glasses go a bit... A bit like that, really. Anyway, exciting times. I will see you. If you're, if you're a patron, I'll either see you first thing in the morning for the breakfast. Otherwise, we'll see you an hour before kick-off. For the, um, the build-up show. And we will find out whether Declan Rice is playing at centre-half or not, won't we? Be interesting to see. See you tomorrow.